Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the Pokemon Grand Prix, the PGP, and uh, this is going to be a really interesting week. So we're obviously coming off of a pretty bad loss last week, and I really want to get into things. Uh, my match is actually going to be one of the first to be played, so I'm just going to start off with that and then have the very, very final recap at the very end. It was a pretty rough matchup. He does have the Coco, he does have the Mega Charizard X. Uh, it does have a Tangela and an Alamomola uh, just behind my face here. Let me just, yeah. You can see the, the entire matchup right there. And uh, it's a pretty interesting matchup. It's a pretty rough matchup for me. But you guys know that I pretty much say that it's going to be an interesting matchup pretty much every week. Although, I just want to just get into this matchup. You guys can see from the team preview that uh, I'm going to lead off with uh, Raquinade, and he's going to lead off with the Tapu Koko, which is going to be a pretty bad leadoff situation just on paper. But... My thinking is that uh, he is going to go for the pivot play. I really did never, I thousand percent never expected him to want to go for Thunderbolt turn one. So I try to play off of that. I, I, I kind of hard read him to want to go for a U-turn here. And that would give me a very free substitute. He potentially would want a U-turn into the Alamomola and try to toxic me. But uh, I'm going to try to prevent that from happening by uh, going for the sub. And he ends up going for the Dazzling, which surprised me in the moment, but uh, it does make a bit of sense. Although, I will get a Liquidation off this turn, and Liquidation just does so much damage. He was really uh, putting his Coco out there to just take a bunch of damage. And here, uh, now I felt that he was free to, to want to go th for the Thunderbolt. So, I kind of just switch out into my Muck trying to eat that hit, but he ends up going for the Roost. So, he called me out completely perfectly, right? Because... Um, it looks to me like if I had just stayed in, eaten the Dazzling Gleam, and gone for another Liquidation, this Coco would have been out really, really early to uh, some over predictions, it looks like. So, that kind of confused me, but uh, having my Muck in here, I think it's going to allow me to just go for a knockoff on whatever he wants to bring in. I think he's definitely going to want to preserve the Lucia, to, to preserve the Coco, and he ends up going into the Almamola. And here's where I reveal that I am a reasonably fast Muck with taunt and i did have to invest quite a bit of speed into this muck in order to uh outspeed an alamomola and be able to uh get a taunt off which did honestly make me so nervous going into this match because i needed to be able to take hits from a few different mons in, in particular this mon that's coming in right now the charizard x but i i do get a toxic off he sees that i'm faster he would be forced to try to scald and i guess try to scald burn me but um that does mean that uh it forces him to switch out and lets me get the Toxic off on the Charizard, which is going to be really interesting for me. Now, I was running some counts, and I knew that I could reasonably take a a hit from this thing at neutral no matter what. So, I decided to just stay in here, try to do a little bit of damage, and you see the Flare Bullets, and my HP bar is going on so quickly, and I live on 1 HP. So, okay, here's the thing. I did not expect this thing to be adamant necessarily, and uh, obviously this thing is adamant, and that is what just barely allows me to take it. There's obviously some sort of a roll here. I don't exactly remember uh, what the post game rolls look like, but uh, it was a huge roller coaster of emotions because my HP bar is moving down further than I thought it would, and then I end up taking it on one HP, and then I get burned, so I start panicking again, and then I remember that I have uh, leftovers, so that kind of mitigated uh, the burn, but. Oh my god, that was a huge roller coaster of emotions. But uh, I expected him to want to roost or maybe attack in again. I don't know. Or Dragon Dance again. But I felt like I had to go into, into the Gramble and uh, drop its attack. Kind of uh, be able to take hits and uh, hit this thing back. But this does allow me to get off a reasonably free Super Fang on whatever wants to come in. And it turns out that the Gliscor is coming in. And this is a super interesting moment for me where I kind of want to gauge damage. And, and obviously he wants to gauge what I'm about as well. So... In this moment, I'm going to attempt to get an Ice Punch off, and uh, I want to really see how much damage I'm doing here. I'm, I obviously don't expect this to KO or anything like that, but I am super curious as to what kind of damage we are doing to each other, and uh, obviously what kind of damage he would do to me with, with an Earthquake, but uh, he doesn't, I think, ever go for an Earthquake here. I just click, su click Super Fang, and this is a Super Head Games moment because um, he can obviously roost and take less damage from the Ice Punch and keep himself healthier. But I can also uh, deal more damage with Super Fang, or if I catch him on an off on an off turn where he tries to attack me, I can Ice Punch him, try to call him out on that um, non roost play. So it's an interesting back and forth here. But ultimately, he does just switch on out, 
goes into the Almamola on an over prediction on my part. I just go for the Ice Punch. I thought he was going to want to attack me for a second, and um, I could have gone for the Super Fang, and that would have been huge for me, but I ended up going into um, this thing because this thing is by far the thing that I don't mind getting Toxics the least, and it kind of deals with this, can get a little bit of HP back with Leech Life. I assume I had Leech Life on this set. Um, I just kind of maneuver around a little bit here. But this is also going to be a huge, huge opportunity for me to uh, uh he's gonna switch out but this is also gonna be a huge huge opportunity for me to try and get off a sticky web as he brings in the tangler obviously tangler is gonna take any hit although i would have gone for leech life in, on this turn anyway so i'm not too too sure what that was about i, I mean i either go for leech life or toxic he has to expect one of the two and tangler wouldn't be the best switch into either regardless uh, also, I should mention this. This match is 40 turns long. It's a pretty long one, so uh, it's, it's a fun one. It's a really, really fun match. But uh, ultimately, he's gonna let his uh, Tangela get Toxic, which I assume he, I assumed he wouldn't want to do. But uh, ultimately, uh, I should have been able to Toxic it last turn if I clicked Toxic the first turn and then clicked Sticky Webs. I think I would have been a little bit better off, but it, it ultimately doesn't end up mattering. He has a stupid good regenerator core here, and it's just going to be a few turns going back and forth of him, of, uh, him dealing a little bit of damage, but I'm going to let this thing go down. I don't want anything else to get lead seated, knocked off, anything like that. I just want to uh, let Toxic rack up a little bit and give this thing up so I can get in a slightly better matchup on this thing. So, from here... Uh, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what I bring in here, but oh, I, okay. I end up bringing in the muck, and I'm thinking I'd be fine in this one v one if I can get a taunt off. I think, but I believe I would go for taunt here as he goes into the uh, glide score, and I think he wanted to bring this in in particular to uh, defog, but now he's not going to be able to ever defog here, and I know he's not going to want to take any damage on this thing. I could obviously have the ice punch, and that would be if he gives me a free turn to ice punch as he defogs and that would be not ideal so i'm sure he's thinking he's gonna find a better turn to be able to uh defog away so he's gonna switch out and go into this alamomola and uh i'm gonna be able to taunt it once again because i i i'm i'm very freaked to give this muck what i can't allow him to, is is uh to pass wishes around and that's exactly what he's trying to do so Pretty much this is telling me that anytime this Alma Mola comes in and my muck is in, I'm going to taunt this thing. I'm going to try to prevent any type of wish that, wishing that you want to do, especially because I really honestly don't even care that much um, when this thing goes down. I just need to be in a good position when this thing goes down. And I actually went for a double taunt because I knew that he would want to switch out into something. I, th I thought the glide score would be an interesting play for him, and I didn't want him to get off a defog for free just because uh, I wanted to kind of... Um, get some damage off on the Alamola. I felt like that would be a dumb trade-off all around. So I went for the double taunt. He's forced to attack me. And, a, and I still have a few turns of taunt left. And that's going to allow my Garchomp to come in. And now my Garchomp is in an interesting position where I can get up a Sword Dance. And he's still under taunt, so he has to attack me. And I know that the Earthquake is going to do a whole heck of a lot, although I was kind of uh, concerned about how much it was going to do. It does about a third-ish. The taunt does wear off. And this... Uh, was a really interesting play for me because I wanted to attack into this thing. I wanted to click Aqua Tail into this thing. He obviously also had to kind of respect um, respect uh, Ice Fang a little bit, but he switches out and I get up a second Sword Dance. And he was really puzzling over this play in the in the post game because he thought that um, he thought that uh, by going for Sword Dance again, it kind of gave him a, a, a free opportunity to try to. Uh, defog here which would have allowed the coco to win but then I, I i felt like he had other outs and he would want to play towards those outs so i went for the second sword and I, honestly i kind i kind of expected like an, an alma mola or a tangla to want to come in but here i i went for a really strong earthquake and i really needed this roll this was i believe a roll and it was one that i really desperately needed but uh it's gonna allow my garchomp to be toxic and here i expected him to want to switch out after the protect and uh I made a little bit of read by going for the Fire Fang. It ultimately didn't even matter a whole heck of a lot because any damage that would have gone off, gone off on this thing would have allowed this following move to KO here. Um, because this angle really scared me. It was really one of the only things that really prevented my um, Garchomp from being able to straight out sweep, even at plus two. But um, 
In retrospect, I might have been better off just going for plus two and being ground DMC. Maybe that would have been better against the Almola. But ultimately, uh, I ended up going to plus four and I had Z Fire Fang. So now I get off an Inferno Overdrive on this Tangela because uh, there's really no other mod that I would want to Inferno Overdrive in this matchup. Everything else uh, gets beaten up by Aqua Tail or the Earthquake. So from here, it brings the Alamomola back in. And I know that he's going to want to protect to try to get my Toxic to rack up. I think the Scar Chomp has one really strong good hit, hit left in him. So I switch out on the expected, um, on the expected Protect. And I believe I just KO'd this thing with a Volt Switch. Now, this was a huge, huge misplay on my part, in retrospect. If i just gone for the Thunderbolt, I got too caught up in the momentum. If i just gone for the Thunderbolt, then keeping this thing in would have been the the thing that would have prevented the the um, the Gliscor coming in and just clicking Defog. Because even this thing, even if this thing is at max HP, uh, Life Orb, Life Orb, modest uh hidden power ice should have been able to ko this glass core so the only way that i really prevented this debug from happening even though um this garchomp was a sackable mon and on paper this looks like a fine trade i can just volt switch out go into garchomp sack it off for a little bit of damage onto this uh glass score it was a huge huge misplay by not just clicking thunderbolt allowing this thing to stay in and it prevented his his um glass score from ever coming in and um being able to defog up for free because now i have this darn uh this darn pangora to worry about and i'm, and I'm really running out of answers for pangoro for a charizard and of course for coco right coco is going to be uh the biggest thing that i kind of have to deal with but also i have a bunch of things to kind of worry about here um and i'm gonna expect them to want to go for dragon dance i go into this thing because um, it's gonna allow uh, Toxic to kind of rack up a little bit, and it's going to uh, allow me to de to keep this thing low enough with Super Fang that it's going to end up mattering in the end. So he goes for the Roost before he goes for the Dragon Dance, which was interesting to me, but uh, it totally, totally makes sense. So now I can go for a Super Fang, and I believe I I believe on this next one I go for a follow up Earthquake, although I'm not too too sure about that. Um, he's gonna go for the straight up Flare Blitz. And I feel confident enough that I can take one, that I can take one at neutral and he gets a critical hit. Now, ultimately, uh, we talked about this a lot after the match ended, and I think this mattered a little bit. It, uh, it mattered in as much as I had, that would have given me a lot of other plays in this endgame, and you're going to see here, uh, the Pangoro is going to come in, and I really don't have many answers at all to an Assault Vested Pangoro. I try to get a Thunderbolt off on this thing, and uh, it does, just doesn't do enough this with this thing being assault vested so um my argument for this mattering is i think that if my if i ko the charizard and my and my grand bull is in here then that kind of forces the pangoro to have to go for poison jab because um i don't think any other move that he had, I think he had just had super. Power, I think he just had dual stab, super power, and uh, knockoff. And I was healthy enough that I was out of range of either of those. So uh, he would have had to have gone for poison jab, which I would have had to have read, and I would have had to have gone into the Jolteon, right? Um, I take that. I, I'm able to volt switch out into into um, my Grand Bull, which is going to be able to um, uh, get into Mitty off, go down, and then and then that allows my Necrozma to come in. Once my Necrozma's in, I actually take a knockoff. I actually take a regular knockoff into a no item knockoff if the Pangoro is at minus one, right? And with that being the case, that actually allows me to hit him with two heat waves on top of that Volt Switch damage. So it would have had to gone Volt Switch uh, chip damage um, into sacking off my Gramble into going into Necrozma, getting off a Heat Wave, being able to take a minus one knockoff, and then autonomizing up on the no item knockoff, getting off a Heat Wave on the next turn after getting the autonomize up, and then I'm able to hit that Tapu Koko really, really hard and potentially win the match from there. I think that was my path to winning, and I think that crit ultimately did matter in that regard, but I would have had to have played that end game perfectly. Obviously, who knows what would have happened, and obviously, um, that that situation was only made 
possible by the fact that I misplayed really, really hard by not going for Thunderbolt on the Alamola with my Jolteon. Uh, that would have allowed my Jolteon to stay in and it would have prevented, would have been the Mon that would have prevented a Defog from going up. And I think I just outright win the match from there. I think I had enough tools to win the match from there. But yeah, those two huge, huge misplays. Other than that, I really liked the way that I played. I liked that fast taunt muck. It put in a whole lot of work and it just uh, created so many mind games. There's a reason that this match was 40 dang turns long. It was a really, really intense matchup, but uh, thank you to my opponent for such a great match. And uh, that was going to be a really early loss for us, unfortunately, for the for the entire team. But you can see the team rallied around my loss. So I believe uh, right after I lost, I believe the next matches to come in were Randy's win and Josh's loss. So we were not doing great. We were having some super mixed results. Um, Although we were playing from behind the entire way through. And then I believe coming right after that was uh, Brandon Super Salamence coming through with a win and a really narrow win by Visualize. So we're in a 3-2 state, I believe, at this point. And it was looking like the Merrill match was going to be delayed. And it was either going to have to be played past the deadline or I think the agreement was that he would just be given a forfeit win because of scheduling reasons. If Frosted could just win her match, if that was the case, then... Uh, we would just win outright and then Merrill would get the forfeit win and we'd go 5-2 and Frosted like a monster coming off the bench in week three came through with a 6-0 win and that's going to be our week Frosted just came through at the very very last second won this match out for us and won the entire week for us despite uh, a pretty insane again 40 turn match uh, on my end uh, my team like I said just rallied around me carried our a team to victory. So what's interesting is that's going to keep us in the top half of the standings. So we're going to be at two and one right now. Top half goes to playoffs, but ultimately what I'm happiest about right now is the fact that we are able to maintain the not only a winning record, but be in the top half. And that's going to be huge moving forward. So I really do want to keep up this momentum and try to keep up in that top half. And whatever we do in playoffs, we do in playoffs. But I really do just want to be in that top half uh, throughout the, the remainder of these weeks. But with that, that's going to be for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with uh, more weeks of the PGP, more weeks of the SBA. Um, what else? We have APA Academy Season 2 coming up really, really soon and potentially some other stuff in the near future. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again out.